Okay, Irene, the floor is yours. Okay, this is a little bit um, unexpected. Um, you have but, to um, have the closer. Okay. Um, I, did, I haven't prepared for this or anything, um, but um, I came over here to see the, um, this conference today um, and to support uh, the union um, uh, in, in, in their amazing work and their effort in, that, that they put in towards harm reduction um, and developing that in Sweden. Um, in the UK, um, the difficulties of the clinic system, the, um, the model, which it is, it's a very white male opiate using kind of uh, clinic system, which doesn't fit everyone. And this has been part of a lot of the um, uh, uh, things that the user uh, networks in the UK have been saying, that we are individuals. Our drug issues are very individual. You don't fit. Um, so I've been using for about 25 years. Um, and after uh, um, all, all the difficulty of um, all the um, going in one methadone clinic to another, going through a revolving door, we call it, a revolving door syndrome, we call it in the UK, in, out, in, out, um, never, um, never always been made to fit the program, but never the treatment fitting me, and certainly never me having a part in negotiating my treatment. And I still remember the first day a doctor ever said to me, well, what do you think it is that you need? And I nearly fell off my chair. No one had ever said that. I need to get a drink of water if that's okay. Yeah. A bit thirsty. Um, mm, there you go. Um, thank you. Mm, that's better. Um, yeah, I nearly fell off my chair. And, and that was a real light bulb moment for me because um, um, I realised then, actually, I do know about what I need and, um, and from then on it was with that doctor, it was a negotiation process. I, became, I started to become part of my treatment. I expected more then. Up until then I think I'd been used to just, because I'd been using drugs, of just accepting what was thrown my way. Um, and and that was a real turning point, um, that, that um, being, being treated with some equality, um, not this huge power imbalance that is often confronts you in the doctor's surgery with the, with the script on one side and you on the other. Um, but the, the, today, um, the situation is my, I, I have a doctor, that has been able to negotiate with me what I need, which was for me a heroin prescription. It was what I've been addicted to for all these years, what I kept using when I was still getting methadone because I was addicted to heroin was the problem um, for me. And I suppose um, I, I, we were able to negotiate the amount I took. Um, I'm able to pick it up at the chemist. It's not something, it's not an amount that keeps going up, as, as some people think. Um, the, the research, uh, and certainly as my, my myself um, shows, it's a situation where, like with other drugs, you find your level, and that's, that you, you stay on that level. You, you find your, what suits you, um, and from there, you, you, you tend to stabilise and then reduce, which is what I do, which is what I've been doing. Um, for the first time in my life, I've got um, choices in my life now. I've got options, I've got some money in my pocket, I can decide what I want to do, um, I can decide to spend time with my family, I can, I can make all those deci decisions that many people take for granted. Um, 
because I have um, a prescription that suits me. And while I'm not saying, while I'm a big supporter of heroin prescribing, certainly, because I've seen it work, I've seen the transformation, I've seen people who've tried and tried and tried on methadone, um, whose lives have been turned around on heroin prescription, not many of them, because there isn't many on, the, on these kind of scripts. But what it does say is that choices are crucial. Options, being able to give people options in, in uh, their uh, treatment is essential. Um, it's worked for me because I've had the drug um, that I've needed. It's been, um, you know, and we've come to that together, my, prescribe, my doctor and me, and I've been treated with respect and dignity. Um, I don't have urine tests anymore. I used to when I started. Now, um, I, my doctor asks me and I tell her. Um, it's as simple as that. I, I, because she's not punishing me, she's not threatening to punish me with anything, I can be honest, there's no need to lie. I don't want to lie to her, no. Um, I never, I, I've never liked being in that situation. People don't. But um, when you're being, when you feel like you're being screwed, you know, when um, um, when you're going to lose your dose, which is your stability in life, people don't realise what 30 mils can do. Um, a, re a reduction of 30 mils to somebody's script can do, or 10 even. Um, so, yeah, it was that combination um, of dignity and respect with my doctor and my prescribing environment and being treated with the drug, my drug of choice, of need, um, that has been transformational. And, um, yeah, I just hope um, that um, in Sweden, as in... Um, you know, other countries that you can move forward with um, prescribing options and don't get stuck on um, these words that really don't, that are, that are irrational, you know, and to speak, uh, to just start discussing these things rationally without the hysteria and um, fear that is often um, attached to these things. I'm a heroin user. I inject three times a day. I don't have horns. I, you know, I work. Um, you know, I have a good relationship with my family, and that's all been possible. I've been able to repair a lot of the, you know, stress that did come out of black market heroin use. Um, I've been able to repair that through having um, prescribed legal heroin. Thank you very much. You said you've been using for, 20, for 25 years. Yes. I would have guessed that you are 25. <laughs> Thank you. <very> <laughs> A wonderful presentation.